What's going on, Cryptocurrency Universe? It's the Bitcoin Miner here, guys. Well, today we're out in the glass shop. If you have been watching my channel for a long time, then you know I'm a glass blower. And I've been doing this since I was a teenager. And what we're going to do today is look at a solar system that we're going to install. I'm going to give you guys a parts list down in the description in case you want to follow along. But the mission is to run an F1 Mini Plus, which will draw about 30 watts mining Varus, 24 hours a day on solar for under $1,000, and, and run a mini computer, which will act as a Varus staking box and a Bitcoin Lightning node for the Block Gear store. So So, all of this is going to be done on solar and under $1,000. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, and it was never feasible. I mean, in order to run this Antminer S9, that thing pulls 1,400 watts, 24 hours a day, and it would take a huge battery bank setup. I mean, we would need three, four times that amount of solar panels. You would need about 4,000, 5,000 watts worth of solar panels just to charge that battery bank. It just makes no sense until, unless you're doing it on an extremely large utility scale. In, in order to go with uh, solar mining, you got to do it on utility scale. On utility scale, it does make sense because you can actually buy it in a large enough uh, bulk and you can do it in a large enough scale. It just, anyways, that's a whole nother video, guys. But it makes sense. But at a home version, it does not. Well, finally, all of the components have come out to make this available. I've been collecting parts for years and I think that we've got everything together and we're gonna give this a go. We're going to run all of this completely on solar for about $900, $950 is what you can get all the parts for. That's only for one of the batteries. Uh, I did get wind up getting two batteries, uh, but I'll explain that later on. So we have 500 watts of rich solar panels. These guys have great reviews. They uh, do their job. They're about $75 on Amazon. Dirt cheap, free shipping. <laughs> so we've got $150, $300. We've got about $175 in solar panels. Uh, we've got a lithium ion magnesium phosphate battery. These guys are 138 amp hours. These are top of the line batteries. They come with all of the bells and whistles. They're about $2,000, $1,800 new. I got them used this summer and they work great they are about the equivalent to two uh, lead acid batteries just to give you an idea two deep cell batteries which i actually bought for this project a couple years ago they're in the they're dead in the garage i had to go take those guys and get them recycled 250 dollars for this where i got these used and they have supposedly only a 300 charge cycles they're good for 4,000 charge cycles so we can expect this entire system to last anywhere from five to 10 years, maybe. Um, it just depends on how long these batteries and how well uh, this charge controller really does with charging the batteries, especially with two of them. It might spread the load a little bit more and allow it to last even longer. So you guys can mine for free for five years, maybe even longer, possibly 10 years. But if you do the charge count, it makes sense. You get up to about seven years. So we'll see. So guys, again, all we need for this whole setup to make it so much simpler is this MPP charge controller. This guy is an all-in-one device. This thing has 800 watt inverter built in. It has the charge controller for the battery. It has the um, a solar inverters and everything all in one box. It makes it so simple. Plug and play LCD screen and we can display everything. Uh, that's about $300, $320. Again, I'll put all the links down in the description. Uh, the batteries were about 300, 320 again, about 375 for the 
500 watts of panels. I You do not need 500 watts of panels to charge one battery. You need only about 200 watts, preferably 300 watts to charge one battery. But unfortunately, I live in the woods, guys. As you can see, they're surrounded <laughs> by trees. And it absolutely makes no sense to put it on my roof of the house. I get more shade over there than I do in this spot right here. Uh, I've been tracking this for several weeks, months actually, and I get a large amount of sun right here, and this is where we're going to put the panels, and I got a couple extra panels just to make sure uh, with all the extra shadowing and whatnot that I'll be able to have enough to charge the batteries up. So, now we have um, the parts we have for this list. All we're going to need is a 25-foot extension cord. You're going to need a multimeter so that you can even test it. Uh, you're going to need these little clamps. They're dirt cheap on Amazon to clamp it down. We're going to use a couple 2x6s. You're going to need this 10-gauge uh, cable. I'm going to be running it about 50 feet. You could probably run this 100 feet with 10-gauge cable. Um, so think 10-gauge cable. You can easily run, separate these about 100 feet. Anything more than that, we're going to have to get out the calculators and stuff. You might want to go uh, something smaller. But we're going to stick to 10-gauge for the 50 feet that we're going to use, we have some extra ends so that we can tie the ends on. And that's really about it. Uh, we're going to need a power supply to run that guy, which we are going to steal from uh, this guy, which is just not worth running these days. It is not profitable at all, but it, you know, it's loud. Crank up the music out here and it's free heat. So, <laughs> you know, why, instead of paying for heat, I might as well just get paid Bitcoin to heat the place, but whatever. Um, so I won't be doing that anymore. And, uh, yeah, guys, follow along, stay tuned and let's build a solar setup that can mine a dollar a day on an FPGA, run a Varus node, a Bitcoin lightning node. And maybe if we add the second battery to it and we don't want the extra longevity, uh, out of the system. The second battery is in case we have a snowy or rainy day, it can still uh, utilize that extra power and charge off of that battery. Now, the cool thing about this guy, and this is one of the other reasons why I never did this before, was when you do an off-grid system, you run out of juice, you stop mining, you're done. And that kind of sucks for our industry. You want to be able to mine 24-7, even if you can't mine off the sun. This guy will automatically switch over to a wall AC plug, which, again, on the next video, stay tuned. Um, if your battery runs out of juice, then no problem. You have a cloudy day, it'll just switch over. So that's what makes this setup so actually feasible, is we can just do one battery. We don't really need two, three batteries, because, you know, whatever. We have one, five, 20 days out of the year that we don't run off of uh, our solar, fine. But we can still mine and utilize our equipment and as you guys have extra money as i said the system will last for a long time you can add an extra battery and expand it i think with the second battery i might even be able to run uh two of these minis we're going to do some testing but definitely one and the other stuff but maybe two minis with everything else that's up to a dollar a day and Varus is extremely power efficient with the FPGA. So, and the new algorithm coming out, it's hard to say how that's going to react, but uh, rumor has it it may even be more power efficient or less power, not necessarily more power efficient, but just less power on the device itself. But who knows? We'll find that out soon. And thanks for watching, guys. Remember, check the description if you want to follow along and build this out with me. See you guys.